Hey guys, Bob for Truth. I'm going to record a video here, and this one's going to be about, uh, I think it's Stillness Perfection. I've seen a lot of people talking about it, and, uh, and hopefully, guys, you understand that when you are born again, you have a new creature that's created in Christ, sealed and sanctified in the body of Christ, and God is the head, the savior of the body. And since your life is hid in God, as Colossians 3, 3 says, you know that God can't sin, right? Hopefully, you know that. Ask any pastor, even the false pastors, and you say, can God sin? You know, because they don't want to be too obvious. And they're going to be like, well, of course God can't sin. You say, so God can't sin, right? No. Is God holy? They're going to be like, oh, yes. Is God righteous? Yes. Is God just? Yes. Um, is there darkness in God? They're going to be like, oh, no. God is light and in him is no darkness. You can say, okay, well, Colossians 3.3 3 says you're dead and your life is hid with Christ and God. So all those who are born again, we're dead to the old man, which is the one you can see, the flesh, but we're alive in Christ. Our new creature is alive in Christ. So if our new creature is alive in Christ and it's hid in God, hid, our life is hid in God, then obviously God is perfect, right? And God is sinless, holy, blameless, and just. So God is all those things for all of us who are in him. And that should shut their mouth. Because if they're going to talk about your flesh, guys, hopefully you know, just like I know, that in our flesh, as Paul said, dwelleth no good thing. But Paul said, if I do the things that I would not, it's no longer I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me that is in my flesh, right? That's the old man. That's why Colossians 3 said, you're dead and your life is hid with Christ. Obviously, if your life is hid, then you'd say, well, that's a great mystery because if my life is hid, why is everyone looking at me and accusing me of sin? Oh, they're looking at my old man who is a sinner. They're not looking at my new man who cannot sin because... My new man is hid in God and God can't sin. It is as simple as that. The other thing I want to address in this video, and I'll try to, I'm going to try to cut to the chase in it is, you know, this guy, Steve Anderson has this thing called the reprobate doctrine. And he doesn't under, seem to understand that the reprobate doctrine, anybody who doesn't believe the, the gospel is rejected. That's why the Bible says flesh and blood cannot see nor enter or inherit the kingdom of God. It says they that are in the flesh can't please God. This is why the notion of a chosen ethnicity or a chosen race or anybody according to the flesh claiming they're God's chosen people besides being chosen for destruction is ridiculous, guys. Because the Bible is saying if you're not in Christ, you're not his. If you don't have eternal life, meaning today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. You have to believe the gospel. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. If you haven't believed and you don't have eternal life, the Bible is saying you're not his. You're not his sheep. You are rejected. You are a goat. And all flesh, all flesh, my flesh, your flesh, Abraham's flesh, all flesh is going to go back to the dust. Even the flesh of Jesus will go back to the dust. It says right now that we're of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Now, they try to erase that out of the modern Bible versions. We're of his body, of his flesh, and his bones. But at the same time, it says we're of the body, of his flesh, and of his bones. It's saying we're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelling enough. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. It's explaining that Jesus, who is the son of man, he is our brother according to the flesh. But he's not, quote unquote, our brother according to the what? Spirit. Understanding meaning the first fruit. That's why it says Christ, the first fruits. All those who are found in him, who are the children of God. So all those who are the children of God are in the body. The body is called the bride. The bride has the children. And then God is the head, the savior of the body. So Jesus is the head, the savior of the body, which is the bride. And the bride has all the children be fruitful and multiply, not of corruptible seed, but by the incorruptible word of God, you must be born again, Nicodemus, right? That liveth and abideth forever. Not of corruptible seed, but by the incorruptible seed, by the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. The parable is just the seed is the word of God. So I want to say that really succinctly, really succinctly, because again, Everybody is rejected according to the flesh. Everybody is rejected according to the flesh. Everybody is rejected according to the flesh. And Steve Anderson is going to get in this thing and he's going to start talking about, hey, you know, I went over to, uh, I was going out over to, I think, Holland or someplace. And I was trying to, I was going and I was basically preaching against the so-called homosexuals. That's what he's going to say. And he's going to say that he was preaching against them. And because of that, he's been banned from something like 31 countries or something of that nature. 
But then the question becomes, what is he talking about? Because does Steve Anderson not believe that Jesus Christ, the man, the mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who's different than God, Jesus, who's a spirit, does he not believe that the mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus died for the, for, for our sins according to the law? That what, he, what he's touting and saying and, and uh, talking about that sin, that's a sin that's a sin according to the law, just like all the sins are according to the law. So why is he, you know, all the sins according to the law, all the sins of the flesh are according to the law. So what is he talking about? And that's why it says by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Right? And so I don't understand what this thing is where Steve Anderson's got this little personal thing with him and he's making up his own doctrine uh, talking about reprobate, a uh, homosexual person is considered a reprobate as if that sin is different than the, God looks at that sin as a, a special, a specific special sin uh, different than all the other sins when the Bible clearly says if you offend uh one part of the law, you offended all parts of the law. It says if you want to try to keep, he that tries to keep the law must keep the whole law, essentially. So um, I'm going to go into this and play a little bit of it for you, for you can see it. I want to talk to him about conservative issue, morality, and all the good things. Um, uh, Pastor Anderson, thank you for coming on the radio show. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I do appreciate it. How have you been? I'm doing great. Yeah. Everything's going well. Um, yesterday, I just got banned from the Netherlands. And then uh, now the Netherlands has made it so that I can't go anywhere in Europe. So I'm actually banned from 31 countries now. Amazing. And why did they ban you? Well, they said it was for hate speech. And what was the hate speech that they were referring to? Preaching against homosexuals. Oh, I see. Um, and are you disappointed? So what? why are you preaching against that when your whole point is you're supposed to go out and tell people that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God? And that by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. And that, but I have good news for you, for all of those who God, Jesus says, I come to save sinners. And here's the good news is that Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day. God, who is a spirit named Jesus, quickened that mortal body and raised him from the dead to put the devil to an open chain. When you believe that you're born again, a new creature created in Christ, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And your life is hidden, God. You're found in him, having not your own righteousness. And salvation is a free gift, not of works, lest any man should boast. And you can't lose salvation for any reason. Your flesh, which is born of your, which is of your first birth, it will perish. It will go back to the dust. But your new man, as Jesus said, my sheep never perish. I give it to them eternal life. They shall never perish. None shall smash them from my hand. Why doesn't he preach that message? What is this deal with trying to say? What he's saying, basically, guys, he's saying, I don't believe that Jesus's blood paid the legal sin debt for that specific sin. That I don't think it was sufficient because they have to do what they have to prove to Steve, do works of the law and prove to Steve in their flesh that they're no longer a sinner. So so Steve has limited atonement. Let's call it what it is. He has what they call the Calvinist limited atonement. And he has the perseverance of the saints because he's saying that the way that they'd have to prove to Steve Anderson that they're not reprobate is by doing what? Works of the flesh. Even though all the works of the flesh are as filthy rags and the Bible clearly says they that are in the flesh cannot please God. God's not pleased with them in the flesh. God's not pleased with me in the flesh. God's not pleased with Steve in the flesh. God's not pleased with any man in the flesh. That's why the Bible says you're not in the flesh but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Okay. So I don't understand what Steve is talking about when he's, he's trying to do this preaching against, quote, homosexuals, because he has this doctrine where he's trying to say, well, that's they're a reprobate. They're a reprobate. But if we look up reprobate, repro, reprobate, if we look up reprobate, Reprobate silver shall men call them because the Lord hath rejected them. Right? Listen to this. Uh, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Do the do people who are unsaved, do they have the mind of Christ? It says to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life. So do, do pe are people who are not saved, do they have the mind of Christ? No, because the mind of Christ, he's the head, the savior of the body. The spirit, the mind, to be spiritually minded is life. And the bride, 
We all been baptized by one spirit into one body. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be the spirit of God dwelling in you. So it's a spiritual body. And so it's a spiritual mind and a spiritual body. They that are in the flesh can't please God. And so they're given over to a reprobate mind. It means God is giving them over to their own mind, their own quote unquote foolish doctrine that they've created in their own mind, their own idol, right? That's why they need to hear the good news because they, they don't, they have to have the knowledge. They have, that's why, you know, they don't know until some, till someone goes and, and preaches to them the truth. But Steve is going over there instead of preaching the truth and just saying all of sin, he's going over there saying teaching, well, there's a certain group of you guys who is a special category. So that's teaching what? That's teaching that God's a respecter of person. That's teaching limited atonement. That's teaching perseverance of the saints. That means that to prove that they're saved, they have to stop doing something. They have to, quote, unquote, repent and try to keep the law. Instead of repenting of their unbelief and repenting of their works, they have to repent of, quote, unquote, not keeping the law, which nobody can keep in the first place, including Steve Anderson. It's, it's utterly ridiculous. So it says God gave them over to a representative to do the things which are convenient or not convenient. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. So all of those who are in the faith are not reprobate because we have the mind of Christ and he's the head, the savior of the body. Prove your own selves. Like examine yourself. Did you believe? Know ye not your own self? How that Christ is what? Jesus Christ is in you. So anyone who doesn't have Christ in them is what? Reprobate. So what does it mean to have Christ in you? You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelling in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, if Christ be in you, if Christ know yourself how Christ is in you, except is in you, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. So he says, know your own self, how that Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. A person who's a reprobate is a person who's not born again, who doesn't have Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, the life in them. See, first, I understand that I'm a sinner, you know, before I was born again and, I, and knowing that my flesh is still full of sin, but I, that's no longer me. But when you're not saved, you, you have to come to this knowledge and understand that you're a sinner with nothing to offer to God, that you, you've offended the law, but you can't keep the law and you can't pay the sin debt because that requires your blood. But how are you going to believe if you've been put to death? Hence, Jesus died for you and says, look, God is patient, not willing that any should perish, that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. And so he sends us out. There's Christ in us, the hope of glory. He said, we say today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. We give them the gospel and we say, look, once you believe you're a new creature, now Christ is in you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Right. And so he's basically saying that if Christ is in you, you're not reprobate, but if Christ is not in you, ye are reprobates. So Steve is going to sit here and pretend that Christ was in, oh, Christ was always in me. No, Steve. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates, that Christ is in us too, right? So reprobate just means that Christ isn't in you, right? But if Christ is in you, it's saying you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, Right? So let's, let's look at this. Let's look at this um, Christ is in you thing. Because it's really important. But you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have, to, have not the Christ be in you, spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So if you're in the flesh, remember Jesus says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So you can't be like, well, Jesus is in me and then Jesus is out of me. Jesus is in me and Jesus is out of me. No, when you're born again, you're born again once. Just like your first birth. You're not born two, three, four, five, six times. Right? You don't die to self three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. God is looking at it like, look, when Paul says something like, you know, I die daily. He's saying mortify your members which are upon the earth. He's not talking about mortify your members which are in heaven because he said he had made us sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. My sheep never perish, remember? So you can't take that I die daily and be like, I die daily is talking about my new man. No, your new man, the sheep that's born again, I give unto them eternal life, they shall never perish, does not die daily. You have to actually believe the basics of the Bible, guys. 
This guy, Anderson, is it, it's something else. And you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be the spirit of God dwelling you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. We go back to this. The reason why we go back to this is because this is very important. Christ is in you. So a reprobate is anybody who's not born again. And that's the person who still needs to die to self by believing the gospel. And then they can say, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but who? Christ liveth in me. Is that you a band? No, not at all. And why not? Well, because the event that we had planned in the Netherlands and the event in Sweden, those, those events are still going to go forward. I had other backup preachers in place. And it's not that I was just dying to go to Europe or to visit these places. You know, I was going there to try to minister to the people there and preach to them and, and evangelize. So it's, it's, it's really no skin off my back. It's, it's their problem. Did they send you a note that you were banned? Yeah, the, the DHL man came and, and brought it to the church building yesterday morning. Like a courier brought a, a letter explaining that I was banned. Amazing. How did they know you were coming? Well, because I've been advertising it, putting videos on YouTube. We've been trying to promote these uh, preaching events that are coming up at the end of May. Oh, okay. And when you call by God, or did you have to go to school to be a preacher? Well, I believe that I'm called by God, but the Bible says, if any man desire the office of a bishop, he desire a good work. If any be blameless, the husband, one wife, etc. So I believe that... It Guys, there's a simple answer to that, uh, to, that, um, to that question. It says, my sheep, they hear my voice. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. If you don't hear his voice, if you're saved, you were called by God because you heard his voice, right? And now you're a new creature. You're his sheep that has eternal life. It's not talking about your flesh. See, there's the first calling for you to believe the gospel. And then he says, now that you heard my call, guess what? I hear you because that's why it says, God heareth not sinners. If any man be a worshiper of God, him God heareth. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God hears us because we believe the gospel. And once we believe the gospel, we're children of God. And that's why we can say, our father that art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, right? Give us this day our daily bread. That So we can pray because he is our father. God is our father. But that's understanding that that's our new man, our old man. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Our old man is not a child of God, right? So today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. My sheep hear my voice. Yes, you're called because when he called, you heard. And that made you that made you the son. That's how you became a son. If you have the desire and you meet the qualifications, you may volunteer to preach God's word. And so I, I consider myself a volunteer. And so so were you called by God? I didn't have some kind of a supernatural call experience, but I do believe in retrospect that I'm called. And so were you called by God? Yes. Okay. In uh, retrospect, yes. In retrospect. What does that mean in retrospect you were? It means that because I followed the Bible's command that if I desired the office of a bishop and meet the qualifications, that I should do that. And then I did that. And then God has blessed. So looking back, it's clear that I'm called. Although I, did, I didn't have some experience where the whole room lit up and an angel came and told me that I was called or something like that. Do you think that that's what it means to be called by God to have that type of experience? Absolutely not, but that's what a lot of people think that it means. So that's why oh, I, I just to clarify that. Yeah. Are you? Do you sin? Yes, I do. You, what type of sins do you commit? Well, the Bible says there's not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. And the Bible says that if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Uh -huh. Okay. So Steve should be clarifying this, guys. When he says, "Do you sin?" Steve should automatically say, "Well, my flesh, man, my carnal man, the one that you can see," as Paul said. If I do the things that I would not, it's no longer I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me does. Sin my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Steve should say, yeah, my, the, the man that you see right now, he's not a child of God. This, the old man does sin. And that's that's who you're looking at right now. So, yeah, the old me is a, is a sinner, you know, but that the new me cannot sin because my life is hid in God. Colossians 3, 3. Right. And, and Christ is in us, you know. So God doesn't God. God can't sin. If your life is hid in God, you can't sin. That's why it says, examine yourself, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves, not meaning prove it by doing good works according to the flesh. Know ye not your own selves, how that Christ is in you. Right. So it's saying if Christ is in you, that's why it's saying, look, you're you're in Christ. Christ is in you. Let me show you this. Let's go to Colossians three. And just to show you this real quick before I go there. So we being many are one body in Christ. So if you're in Christ, how can you say you're, you're, you can sin according to the man that's hid in Christ? 
Of course, your old man can sin. Your old man is a sinner. That's why the Bible considers you to be dead to the old man. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Yes, so be the spirit of God dwelling in you. If any man not in the spirit of Christ, he's not in our heads. So we being many are one body. One body in Christ. Does it say three bodies? Is there three distinct persons? No, there's one body. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. We all been baptized by one spirit into one body. So we being many are one body in Christ and every one members one of another. So the Bible is explaining what this means, guys. And so if we're, if we're one body, but who's the head, the savior of the body? Christ is the head, the savior of the body. So uh, that's the one thing that we need to understand. And then the other thing we need to, to get is, is this. Uh, maybe. The other thing we need to understand is for ye are dead and your life is hid. So Steve should just say to him, look, uh, Jesse, um, you know, you, you, the man you're looking at, he's a sinner, right? He's a sinner, but this is no longer I. The me that you see is not, no longer me. So you're looking at me, but, but I'm, it's no longer me. The me that you see is no longer me. The true me, the me that is the son of God, is hid. Your life, you're dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. My life is hid with Christ and God. And the way that you can, can say this is, look. I want to show you this because here's the thing that's just wonderful. Look at this, guys. Look at, look at how amazing God is. I want to show you this. Let's do this. Uh, that. And then we'll go over here. And do this. Look at this. You're dead and your life is hid with Christ and God. But wait a minute. If you're dead and your life is hid with Christ and God, then I would go to someone like Steve and I'd say, well, I can see you, Steve. So if I can see you, how are you hid? And then Steve would say, well, if I do the things that I would not, it's no longer I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. But that's no longer that's no longer I. That's, that's my old man. That's my flesh man. My old man is dead. So the man that you see, that's not me. So the eye of him that hath seen me shall see me no more because I'm a new creature created in Christ and my life is hidden in God. And he says, look, thine eyes are upon me. Yeah, you're looking at Steve Anderson. You're looking at Marcus, but I am not. Why? Because I am dead and my life is hid with Christ in God. How beautiful is that, guys? See, this, the, the, the people, the science people don't want you to see stuff like this in the Bible. They don't want you to like understand because this, think about what this does. Think about the freedom and think about the security. Think about how, how strong your faith is strengthened when you know that it's got nothing to do with my flesh. My old thing has passed away. Yeah, people are looking and they can accuse me. The woman caught in adultery, but I have condemned myself. I was condemned in myself before I believed the gospel and I understood that I deserved death. That's why I understood that Christ died for my sins. And that's why I understood that I, I had to be saved by grace through faith, not of works that any man should boast. And I, and I believed the promise that God gave me for eternal life. And I believed him when he said he made me a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I'll never perish. I actually believe God. And I'm found in him having not mine own righteousness. And my life is hid. And so for anyone to accuse me, you can accuse the old man all you want. I didn't try to uh, stand up and justify myself before God and the old man. That's why I died to the old man. I'm dead to that old man. So as you sit here and look at me. Well, the eye of him that has seen me shall see me no more. Thine eyes are upon me and I am not. Why am I am not? Because that's no longer I, as Paul said. My life is hid with Christ in God. How, how beautiful is that, guys? How, how gorgeous is that? How amazing is that? That's what's amazing, guys. And that's what we have to understand. So when he says, there's not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not, that's true. But then when it says, if we say we have no sin, we are a liar and the truth's not in us. That's something we all said. We said, we understand God came to save sinners. And we understood that according to our flesh, we were sinners. Our flesh man is a sinner. We, we get that. That's why we died to the old man. 
So, but now that we believed, we understand what? Christ is in us and our life is hid in God. So that's why in Christ is that I am the truth. So it's those who don't believe, who, who tried to justify themselves, who didn't see themselves as sinners. Those, that's what that verse is talking about. If we say we have no sin, we're a liar and the truth's not in us. That's the person before they believe the gospel. Because once you believe the gospel, you're a new creature and your life is hidden in God. And Jesus is in you and Jesus is the truth. And so the truth is in us because we, we knew that we were a liar before. We said all, you know, let God be true and every man a liar. So he's misusing that verse. And he, he, Steve seems very confused. The Bible also says that whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourges every son whom he receiveth. So obviously right, he removed our scourge. What do you think that was, guys? Or no, the filthiness of our flesh, right? That old man, old things have passed away. This earth, the pollution of this world, the corrupt seed. We're not of the corrupt seed, right? That's what the Bible is talking about. Obviously, God is not scourging his sons for doing the right things. He's scourging his sons because they sin, because everyone sins. What type of sins do you commit? Well, I'm... No, he didn't say he scourges sons because they sin. He's saying that the scourge is saving some with fear, fear, pulling them from the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the what? By the flesh. Paul talks about that body of death. Right? Who would deliver me from this body of death? That's what Paul is talking about. Even though we recognize that that's no longer us, we say, look, this body of death. The body of death obviously is not the body of the, not not the spiritual body of Christ. The body of death is the crown of thorns and the body that was this hunt curses any man that hangeth on a tree. It's not talking about the spiritual body, apparently. So that's what the Bible's talking about. So. I'm not going to sit here like in a confessional booth and, and recite my sins to you. And why not? Because that would be highly inappropriate. And do you tell others at your church not to sin or do you tell them that it's okay to sin? I tell them not to sin. But why are you telling them not to if you are sinning yourself? Because every apostle in the New Testament told people not to sin and they all sin themselves. So I'm following the example of the apostles and prophets who were all sinners and yet preached for people not to sin. And did those people sin once they, the, uh, the ones in the Bible, the prophets, did they sin once they were born again? Absolutely, since the Apostle Paul wrote Romans chapter 7 and talked about his continual struggle with sin and continually doing the things that he hates as he's writing the epistle to the Romans. And so when, when he said... See, when Paul said he was continually struggling with sin, Paul was saying that no, it's not that... Paul was saying that his old man just sinned. My, my flesh. Look, Paul was just saying, look, that old man which he said is no longer I. Now then, it is no more I. Look, it is no more I that do it. He's using the personal pronoun, but he's saying, look, there's an old me and a new me. The old me, which is of the flesh, that's no more me. For I know that in me, which is the no more I that do it, that's my old man. In my flesh, the one that I'm dead to, dwelleth no good thing. That's the one you can see. That's the one you can keep accusing. But that's the one who's no longer me. Right. And then he says, for to will is present with me. But how to perform that? Listen, which is good. Then Paul said, I, I but I do. I sometimes I figure it out and I can do it. No, he says, I find not how to perform that, which is good. I find not. Hence, that's what he says in my flesh. Well, no, he didn't say, well, there's some good. Sometimes he says, I find not. How to do that which is good, I find not. But again, that is no more I that do it. Said that Was he saying that, oh, I am now born again and I still sin? Absolutely. Amazing. And what is the... Per so this is, a, this is where Steve is... Look, the Bible says, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed, which is what? Parallel is the seed is the word of God. Remaineth in him, Christ. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Christ in you. We just saw that. Christ in us, the hope of glory. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Now, Colossians 3 that says you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Guess, guess where else it says this, guys? Whosoever abideth in him, being found in him. Who is the him? We're in the body of Christ. Our life is hid in God, Colossians 3.3. 3. 
So whosoever abideth in him sinneth not, because what? Who's, and it says, whosoever sinneth had not seen him, neither knoweth him. So this is the problem when people see people are trying to make this these false dichotomies. They're saying stuff like we're a chosen people according to the flesh through some foolish genealogy, not recognizing the difference between the children of God, which are all spiritual children born of the spirit. And that was born of flesh is flesh. That was born of spirit is spirit. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And so they're trying to make this false uh, narrative where they're trying to make God a respect a person. But it says, whosoever abideth in him, but if you're in him, you're not in the flesh. Whosoever sinneth had not seen him. Well, wait a minute, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So guess what? I guess you got to see it from faith to faith to just show what? Live by faith, neither known him. So all these people claiming that they knew God and this and that and at Mount Sinai and Oh, I was in Egypt and all this kind of stuff. All these arguments, whether you call yourself a so-called Hebrew Israelite, whether you call yourself a so-called, say you're a Jew, but you're not. What does it, when you say you're so-called Christian, this lie of the three Abrahamic faiths, is just that, guys. It's a lie. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. We all been baptized by one spirit into one body. And God's the head, the savior of the body, the spirit and the bride say, come. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. There's no condemnation of those who are aware. In Christ Jesus, who cannot sin, who walk not after the what? Putting off the putting off the filth of the garment of the flesh. Walk not after the flesh, but after the what? Spirit, as many as are led by the spirit. Who's the shepherd? That'd be Jesus. Led by the what? Spirit. So who's the shepherd? Jesus. Is it a shepherd? Are we being led by the flesh of Jesus? Or are we being led by the spirit? As many as are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So if you're not led by the spirit, he says, you don't even know him. You don't even know him. So these people are saying this stuff and it, it doesn't make sense what they're saying. And it says, whosoever abideth in him. You just ask the person, say, well, wait a minute. If my life is hid in God and I abideth in him and I'm found in him, having not my own righteousness and I'm in God, my life is hid in God. Why are you accusing me? Don't, do you not understand what it means to be born again, Nicodemus? So when Steve says this, he's wrong because it says, whosoever was born of God did not commit sin for his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Guys, we just saw uh, the, the definition. Did we just go back? Uh, you're dead. Let's see. Okay, maybe I'm... Oh. We just saw the definition of reprobate, right? And in that definition of reprobate, it's basically saying the people who aren't reprobate are the people who what? Know ye not your own selves, how that what his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin? How Jesus is in you, except you be reprobate. Jesus is the truth, right? So we have the truth in us. So if we have the truth in us and we're sealed and sanctified in the truth, right? Sanctified by that word, that word is truth. We're in him and he's in us. How can we be sinners if God cannot sin? You got to make a distinction between the old man and the new man, the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And if you go to this, um, if you go to this verse, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. There's no, there's no confusion, guys. So all this stuff he's talking about, See, Steve, when he's talking about, he, he's going to have to change his, uh, he's got to change his doctrine later on in this conversation because right now he's caught. He's saying something that's obviously not true and uh, he doesn't seem to understand what it means to be born again. And the reason why he's gone down this line and saying this is because why? Because he just got finished saying he's accusing the so-called homosexuals as if Steve has, Steve hasn't sinned, as if Steve hasn't offended the law. It says, if you, it says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Steve hasn't kept the commandments. I haven't kept the commandments. No one has kept the commandments. So Steve, he says, you're supposed to love God and love thy brother as thyself. Right? And so Steve doesn't do that. So why is he pretending? Why is he lying? Purpose of being born again of God, if you're still going to be sinning, if, because sin is Satan's nature. Why would you be bothered being born again if you're still going to be sinned? And all those who sin are slaves to sin. What's the purpose of being born again? 
Well, the Bible says that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So being born again is the prerequisite for entering the kingdom of God or for going to heaven. So but you believe, that, do you believe that sinners will enter the kingdom of heaven? No, I do not. Well, well, how can you see the kingdom of heaven then if you're a sinner? Because of the fact that when we get born again, our body is not born again. Our flesh is not born again. Only our spirit is born again. So. Okay, so that's, that's the problem. So this is what I want to go back to this, guys, because this is important. See, he says our body. See, that's, he, this is the, the lie these guys are trying to teach. For we, for as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, we being many are one body in Christ. We do have a body. We're the body of Christ. We have a glorified body because we glory in Christ. It's one body. But Steve doesn't want to acknowledge that because he goes to a physical church and he says, well, my physical church where I have people gather in my temples made with hands and we get people to worship with men's hands. And then I collect the money, which has the uh, image and subscription of the some 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 idol on it, some some man. Right. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar. He doesn't want to acknowledge that because it kind of blows up his whole little scheme. So he's he's making it more confusing because instead of just saying, oh, no, you know, actually, you're right. I'm a new creature. My life is hitting God. I'm in the body of Christ and God is the head, the savior of the body and God is my righteousness. So that's all that. So you're right. My old man is a sinner and he'll, he'll perish and stay right here in the dust and go back to the dust. My, my new man is seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So the man you're looking at right now, that's the old man. As Paul says, no longer I do it, but uh, sin that dwells in me, as in my flesh dwells no good thing. But I delight after the law of God, after my what? Inward man. So my flesh and blood is not going to go to heaven. The part of me that is sinful, the flesh, is going to die and go into the earth. And my perfect, regenerated, sinless soul is going to go to heaven. And so the spirit doesn't control the body? So at this point, Steve should say, the spirit doesn't have anything to do with the body. That that is born as flesh is flesh, that that is born as spirit is spirit. That which is born of flesh is flesh, that which is born as spirit is spirit. It is the spirit that quickens the flesh part or nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life, right? There is therefore now, no, now, present tense, no condemnation of them which are where? In Christ Jesus. You're dead, your life is here with Christ in God, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Right? That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Right? For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. But ye are not in the flesh. Here's the point. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be, the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Okay? So this is the thing, guys. And listen, know ye, know ye not that ye are the temple of God? That's not a carnal temple. God doesn't dwell in a temple made with hands. It needs to be worshipped with men's hands. And that the Spirit of God dwell in you? Well, what do we just what do we just see, guys? The spirit of God dwells in us. It says you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's not in his. So you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelleth in you. It's a spiritual temple. That body we know is a spiritual body, and we says the spirit and the bride, the body, say come. So no, Steve should say, look, I'm not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Well, when the spirit controls the body, that's when we do what's right and don't sin. But when we walk in the flesh, then we fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the Bible says the spirit. So this is where he messed up, right? This is where he messed up. He's saying when this, when that, when this, when that. He messed up because he's making it seem like, guys, he basically he's saying that he's making it seem like you're born again, but then you go back to being the old man in the flesh. He's a, Steve is not acknowledging, oh, when you believe you pass from death to life, that's that's a one time deal of being born again and your life is hid in God. It doesn't say where your life is hid, but then your life comes back out and then you're unborn again and then you have to be reborn again and then all this kind of stuff. That's not what the Bible is saying.
spirit lusteth against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit. And these are contrary to one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. So my spirit is saved and going to heaven, but my flesh is still unregenerate. And that's why I still sin because I'm in the flesh. Hey, so he says his flesh is unregenerate because he's basically trying to say that he's going to get a regenerated flesh body, guys. That's what he's that's what he's alluding to. These guys, they, they need to say what they mean. You know, this is why I get kind of annoyed when Renee says stuff and it's like, say what you mean. If you believe in this lie of these three tenses of salvation and all this kind of stuff, people have been saved in the past. People are being saved present. People are going to be saved in the future. But when you're telling people that, well... We, we're saved from this, the, we're saved from the uh, such a penalty of sin, then we're saved from the such and such of sin, then we're saved from the presence of sin. Like, what are you talking about? There's no presence of sin in God. So what you're saying does not make any sense. But then they're trying to say, well, I believe in grace, but then they're teaching all these confusing things. And I'm like, why don't you just teach people that their life is in God? You can't get any more righteousness than, you can't be any more righteous than being in God. God is righteous. There's none righteous but him. So you can't get any more righteous, more sinless than being in God who's perfect and sinless and just and light. And in him is no darkness. You can't you can't get any. I mean. So this is the thing that gets me when these guys say stuff like this. So now that you're born again, you're, you're a pastor of God and you're born again. Are there moments where your spirit is not controlling your body because you're sinning? Absolutely. How do you how see what he said? Absolutely. So he basically he's, he said, look, this is the hypostatic union of the flesh and the spirit. Because, the again, a spirit hath not flesh and bones. So what are you talking about? And we only serve God with our spirit. God whom I serve with my spirit. Let me show you this. Let me show you that. You don't serve God with your flesh, guys. Just so when the pastor is asking you for your money and all that kind of stuff, just so you know. For God is my witness. Who's my witness? God is my witness. Because God, how's God your witness? Because God searches the heart. God is the only one who can see who have faith. Right? Whom I serve with my, what? Spirit. They that are in the flesh can't please God. Oh, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelling in you. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. In the gospel of his son, that without ceasing, I make mention of you always in prayer. Right? So that's what it's talking about. God whom I serve with my spirit. You don't serve God with your flesh. At all. At all. Period. So don't stop Stop with the hypostatic union of the flesh and the spirit. It's not working. Steve is going to say this, but then he's going to have to back up the truck and, 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 and correct himself. How is it that the spirit, once you're born again and your spirit is now of God, how is it that it has moments when it's sinning, when it's not controlling the body? How does sin overcome this, overtake the spirit if you're now of God? Because every single day we have to die to self. Paul said, I die daily. We have to deny self and take up the cross and follow him. And so if we don't make a conscious effort to mortify the flesh, the flesh will be in charge in our lives. And if it were automatic, that just being saved or being born again just automatically makes you walk in the spirit, then he wouldn't have to tell us over and over again, be filled with the spirit, walk in the spirit, don't give in to the lust of the flesh. He wouldn't have to give us all those commands. Oh, he doesn't take you over and over to do it. He's just telling you what to do. When you so when, when Paul says, I die daily, guys, it says mortify your members which are on the earth. We're no longer members. Of, again, the members that are on the earth, that's the old man. And we're coming here and we're having what? Warfare. And we're giving, we have the whole armor of God. We have the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, girded about with truth, feet shod with the gospel of peace, and the sword which is the word of God, and the shield of faith, of course. And we're telling people the gospel and we're telling them to die to self. We're telling them to die to the flesh. That's mortifying our members which were on which are on the earth. Because we're no longer a quote unquote member of that club, but we're here in the flesh, because who is an antichrist, but he that denied that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. So when you see Steve, you're just you're when you hear Steve speaking, you say, Well, is it Christ speaking in Steve? Right? When you hear me, since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you is not weak, but is what? Mighty in you. When you hear Steve, you know, you are going to say, well, this man says he's speaking the truth.
But Jesus is the truth. So is it Jesus speaking in him? Or is it Steve speaking? That's what you're asking. Right? Since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me. Correct? And so when it talks about the thing, mortify, let's say mortify members. I think it's mortify your members. Mortify there your members which are upon the earth, right? Listen, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection. Guys, this is like saying, this is talking about when you were of the flesh. Back when you did not know God. But now you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelling in you. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Right? This is back before you pass from death to life. And it's saying now, go and mortify the members. Stop the works of the flesh. You're telling people to believe the gospel. And then once they believe, they're dead to the flesh. And that's mortifying the members who are on there. Because the Bible is looking at it like, look. In Adam, you know how the Bible talks about in Adam? Everybody's a member of Adam, right? For as in Adam, all died. So that's a member. You're, everybody was a member of what? Everybody starts out a member of Adam. But then it says the second Adam is a quickening spirit. In Christ, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. This will be the spirit of God dwelling in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's not of his. No condemnation of those in Christ Jesus who walk not out of the flesh, but out of the spirit. In Christ shall all be made alive. That's what the Bible is explaining when it says mortify the members are upon the earth. It's talking about those people who are, quote, unquote, your, quote, brothers. What they, they would be your brother-in-laws, quote, unquote, those who are still under the law, who are of, of the flesh still. But God's looking at it like you're actually, in my sight, you're actually dead to the old man. But when people see you, they're going to see your old man. You're going to come to them. In the old man, because they're going to have to believe, they're going to have to have faith, right? They're going to have to, they're going to have to believe. The, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. They're going to have faith. You um, see the problem is, see Steve doesn't believe. See, when, this goes to the Antichrist doctrine, guys. Who is an Antichrist? But he that denies that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh, and that's why it's so it's so horrible, guys. Because uh, since you seek your proof. Of Christ speaking in me. And then it says, but is mighty in you. So Christ, Christ in us, the hope of glory. So people are like, I don't believe Jesus Christ is coming to flesh. Because people are like, well, Jesus Christ couldn't come in the person looking like Jesse. Or maybe some people say, if you're so-called, you're like, well, Jesus couldn't come in a person looking like Steve. Or if he couldn't come and say you're a woman or whatever you look like. People are like, I don't believe Jesus Christ is coming to flesh because he can't come in someone who looks like you. Because I've been taught that Jesus Christ is a certain ethnicity. It's silly, guys. It's heresy. It's silly. It's antichrist. How are people getting saved if Jesus isn't here? This guy says he went over to wherever he went to, Netherlands or whatever. He said he was going over to do what? To soul, to soul win, to save people. How is he saving people? Here's my question for you. This is the question everybody should ask. To the only wise God, our Savior, how is he saving people? How is he saving people without Jesus? Makes no sense, right? So you, you got to start catching these contradictions when people start saying stuff because they're trying to teach this false prophecy of the Middle East and the Balfour Declaration, 1948. And then they're talking about some three Abrahamic faiths. You can say, could you show me in the Bible the three Abrahamic faiths? Because I know people have a lot of faiths in Men have a lot of religions that they made up. One of them being that uh, their people are chosen according to their flesh in a, in a, as God's sheep when Jesus said the exact opposite. Um, so explain to me this three Abrahamic faiths when the Bible says what? What does the Bible say? Let's, let's look at it. Could you explain one Lord, one faith, one baptism? We all been baptized by one spirit into what? One body and he's the head, the savior of the body. So what are the people talking about these three Abrahamic faiths? What about this? When you, um, what does it, in John, I believe somewhere in John, the Bible says that uh, if any man or woman say that they, of, of God, that they've been born again of God, but they still sin, that they are a liar and the truth is not in them. 
for this reason Christ came that you should not sin because sin is of your father the devil. How do you explain that away? Well, number one, you're misquoting that scripture. That's not what it says. And number two, and you have to get the context of First John. In chapter one, he already told you, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So you're taking it out of context and you totally misquote. Right. If I come to you with the gospel and you're trying to justify yourself and saying, I thank God I'm not like the homosexuals, then you've offended one part of the law, you offended it all. So don't try to lower the standard of God so that you can feel better about yourself and claim that you're more righteous than the homosexuals. The sin that God's not going to forgive is of sin because they believe not on me, John 16, 9. So Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. God, who's a spirit named Jesus, raised the man, the mediator between God and man from the dead to put the devil to an open chain. And he's saying, when you believe that, he says, I give you the free gift of eternal life. And it says, faith is another law. So that's what the Bible is saying. First John 3, 9 says, whoever abideth in him. Again, abideth in him is being in Christ. Quoted that scripture. There's no mention of being born again. You're totally twisting that scripture when, you it, directly and then I'll respond to it. How do you explain a way that it says that if you are born of God, you cannot sin because sin is of your father, the devil? How do you explain that away? I don't explain it away. I explain it the right way, which is to say that that part of me that is born again, which is my spirit, cannot sin. But, but since my flesh is not born again, my flesh can still sin. But it says that you cannot sin if you've been born again of God. It doesn't separate the flesh from the spirit because the spirit can co control the flesh. And so it's not separating one. How, why are you separating? See, this is where Steve is realizing his mistake earlier when he's like, oh, that's right. I did say that the spirit controls the flesh and blah, blah, blah. But now I got to realize that's right. That's right. The, the flesh is against the spirit and the spirit is against the flesh that you can't do the things you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. Now he's going to have to change up. He's going to have to switch it up now. And so what Steve should just admit he made a mistake here. But apparently Steve is confused. So he's not he's, he's going to say it, but then he's going to get confused again. The flesh from the sin, if it's the, uh, I mean, from the uh, spirit, it's the spirit that control the flesh. That's why when you're born again, he takes the sinful spirit away from you. And now you're controlled by uh, the spirit of God. He doesn't say when you're born again, he takes the sinful spirit away from you. You're a new creature. So, yes, that old, old things are passed away. And that's all things. If any, it says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And the all things, it tells you the children of the flesh aren't children of God. And it says it is sown a natural uh, body is raised a spiritual body. And God's called the father of spirits and, and flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So people just need to recognize that um, the children of God are spiritual children. And people just have such a hard, con it's like such a hard thing for people to understand that. Because they see the flesh, even though they go and bury people and put people, it's like people don't believe that the flesh is, is actually the temporal, the mortal thing, and the spirit is actually the eternal thing. That, that we have the, etern the eternal life is the eternal spirit, not, not e eternal flesh. There's no eternal flesh like these guys are trying to teach you. Odd, which is not of sin. Why are you the separating the, the entire New Testament separates the flesh and the spirit. Again and again, he talks about these are the works of the flesh. These are the fruit of the spirit. You've got to walk in the spirit so that you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh lusteth against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. And so the Bible makes this distinction over and over. And that's why the apostle Paul said in Romans 7, when I do that, I would not. It's no longer I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Amazing. And what? Well, that, see, that, see how you just rattled that off? So that's true. But he should have said that at the first because at the beginning, he did not say that. So Steve, he says stuff when he gets caught up it's because he was teaching this. The reason Steve got caught up in this is because, one, you can't preach against the homosexuals and then say what he just said. So if you understand that, Steve, then why are you why are you talking about the specific sins of the homosexuals when all all the sin that comes of the glory of God? And if you offended one part of the law, you offended all. Why are you making there a special category of sin then? When the, the truth, the sin that's unforgivable is of sin because they believe not on me. God's not going to forgive you not believing the gospel. The gospel is preached unto them as well as unto us, but it didn't profit them being not mixed with what? Faith in them that heard it. Faith is another law. So why didn't Steve say that at the beginning? What's amazing is that you actually believe that you don't sin. That's that's borderline insanity. Amazing. So it's what what would happen? Ridiculous that you teach that. What would happen to you as a pastor and as a born again Christian if the moment come right at the moment when you are sinning, at the moment coming, you die. Will you still go to heaven? Absolutely. You would go to heaven even though you're sinning and dying? Absolutely. And why, but, but, but all those who sin cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Well, well <laughs> that's the whole point. Jesus said, my sheep never perish. He says, I give unto them eternal life. The eternal life is obviously not the flesh. That's the testimony that bears witness to you that the children of the flesh aren't children of God. It's the fact that they perish. That's why Jesus said, my sheep never perish. You're not my sheep. I give unto my sheep eternal life. They never perish. None shall snatch them from my hand. 
the grave is going to devour all flesh. That's why they in the flesh can't please God because God is not pleased with the works of the flesh and the works of the flesh are a filthy rag. And that's why it's going to perish and go back to the dust. And Steve should just be like, well, because I'm born again, because my new man is a spirit man and children of the flesh aren't children of God. And I'm going to go back to where I was born. I was born from Jerusalem above as free as mother of us all, not the flesh birth. The Bible says, if you sow into the flesh, you shall the flesh reap corruption. You sow into the spirit, shall the spirit reap life everlasting. I've been born of the incorruptible seed by the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. Heaven, why would he let you in? Because my soul is going to heaven. Amazing. My flesh is going to stay behind. Is it possible you're wrong? Absolutely not, because Jesus said, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I've been passed from death unto life. I shall not come in. So if nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, then why did he quote earlier, if we say we have no sin, we're a liar, and the truth's not in us, as making it seem like that was, we're making it seem like that's replying to a person who's been born again. He just said, if you're born again, can you sin? And Steve said, yes. And now he's saying nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Okay, well, isn't Christ Jesus the truth? So if you say you have no sin, you're a liar and the truth not in you. But if you're born again and you're sealed and sanctified in the, sanctify me by thy word, thy word is truth. You've been born again by the incorruptible word of God, the word of truth that liveth and abideth forever. Then he should acknowledge that, right, once I'm born again, my life is hidden in God and God is true. God is the truth. So I'm still been sanctified in the truth. Into condemnation, I have everlasting life. And so no matter what happens, I'm going to heaven because I have believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. I'm saved by grace through faith, not by works. But sin is death. Don't you agree to that? Or do you agree to that? No, I don't. You know, he doesn't agree that sin is death. So why, <laughs> so why did Jesus die for our sins? I mean, it's, inc it's incredible. Sin, if a man commit a sin is worthy of death, death by sin, one man sinned into the world and death by sin. So sin's not, why did Christ die for our sins? If sin's not wages of sin is death. What is this guy talking about? The law of sin and death, the sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law, right? Nobody's going to be justified by the law. Agree that sin is death? No, I don't. Really? And are you saying that the flesh is stronger than the spirit? It depends on the person. So with you, you're... So there you go. So he just said all that, and then he goes back to foolish, the foolishness. If he's, he just said, talking about, well, my, my spirit's going to go here, my flesh is going to go back to the dust, blah, blah, blah. And then he says... And he asked him a question. He should, Steve, this is where Steve should be like, but I'm not in the flesh, but in the spirit. I'm born again. Do you understand that being born again means I'm no longer of the flesh? Why do you keep looking at my outward? Oh, that's right. I was just talking about the homosexual. So if I say that, then that's going to make me look like a hypocrite because I'm like, well, if it's not about my flesh, why am I concentrating on their flesh and what they're doing in their flesh? Why, why am I focusing on the outward appearance in the flesh if all the, all the works of the flesh are as filthy rags? That means I'm teaching, in some ways, I'm teaching repenting of their sin. They got to repent of their, quote, quote, they got to try to keep the law instead of repenting of their unbelief and repenting of the works of the flesh. Meaning, don't try to work the law because you're not by the works of the law should no flesh be justified and believe the truth. Come to the knowledge of the truth. And I'm Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. So what must you do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe the truth. And then give them the gospel. So he's in his catch 22. Now he's like, he's gone back to the crazy and beggarly things about, you know, the flesh. Are ye so foolish having begun in the spirit? Are ye made perfect by the flesh? It's absolutely foolish what Steve Anderson is saying. He started out foolish talking about some. Um, oh, I, I've been kicked out this and that. Paul was saying that that's foolish. That's trying. He's trying to brag. He's like, you know, Paul was saying like, um, I think, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. He's like, are you a minister? I'm a minister of Christ too. 
And we're going to start bragging about the flesh. Oh, let me tell you about what happened to me over in the Netherlands. They kicked me out of 31 countries, y'all. Y'all believe that, man? I was really suffering for Christ. I was been so persecuted. Lord, Lord, have mercy on my soul. Steve, what are you talking about? You sound in labor more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths off. He's saying, I speak as a fool when I say this stuff, guys. Because we're one body. So he's speaking as a fool to even say these things. Um, let's go back. Uh-oh. A flesh is stronger than your spirit? You know what? You're using man's logic. I quoted a bunch of scripture to you. and you're You know why he's saying that you're using man's logic? Now he wants to get out of it because he's been caught in a contradiction. Because he should, Steve should just be like, well, I serve God with my spirit, not my flesh. All the works of the flesh are as filthy rags. So, uh... I'm dead to the old man according to the flesh. So you're believing damnable heresy of sinless perfection. It's nonsense. It's no. If you, if your life is hitting God, your new man is perfect because God's perfect and God can't sin. So that sells that. Ridiculous. And you know what? The Bible says that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves because you're not deceiving anyone else. You're only deceiving yourself because I know you're a sinner. So Everybody knows you're a sinner. You're only deceiving yourself if you're actually foolish enough to think that you have no sin. And so I yeah, if you're a child of the flesh, that means you're not born again and yes you're you're sin you're in your flesh doesn't no good thing but if you're born of god your new man is hitting god and god can't sin are you saying that your flesh is stronger than your spirit that's why you sin well you're, you're trying to put strange words in my mouth i'm asking a question that's a question it's not putting the bible says avoid foolish questions and that's a foolish question so i'm not going to answer your foolish question so you're not going to answer if you're saying that your flesh is stronger than your spirit and that's why you sin you won't answer that i'm not going to answer your foolish question the reason steve is stuck on this is because he's trying to teach words see he's trying See, guys, it sounded all good, right? But you see, he's caught now. He's trying to teach works. He's basically trying to say, because he goes to his church, he teaches this doctrine called the Christian life, right? You got to live the Christian life. He, he goes into his congregation in this building made with hands, trying to get people to worship with God's hand, worship God with their hands. He's collecting that tithes money, bringing all the tithes and offerings. And he's saying that's, that's money, right? When he's talking about we're offering a spiritual sacrifice, we're offering the Lord what God has given to us. He's saying he, we gives us daily bread. And he says, whoever eats that daily bread, they have eternal life. And their new creatures created in Christ. They're born from Jerusalem above us, free as mother of all, just like we were. So we're not offering things at our own hands, quote, unquote. Where it's, it's God that worketh in us to do in the will of his good pleasure. So we understand that. So when Steve is saying this, he's trying to teach the so-called Christian life. And he's trying to talk, he's trying to tell this congregation. And he's trying to tell his wife and he's Tell them because he wants his wife to be faithful. And he's trying to get his kids to be good and all this kind of stuff. And I get it, Steve. But you're 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 what you're doing is you're teaching heresy and you're teaching heretical doctrines because you're confusing people because you're saying you're basically trying to tell them to live quote godly in their flesh. And Apostle Paul, how to do that? Said how to do that which is good. I find not that is in my flesh. Well, there's no good thing. That applies to Steve. That applies to me. That applies to uh, uh, every my my wife, my children. Uh, Steve's wife, Steve's chilling. It applies to every child of the flesh. So th that's the way it is. He says, they that in the flesh cannot please God. All the works of the flesh are as filthy rags. We know what the works of the flesh are. So if you're going to claim that your flesh is somehow this hypostatically, the spirit and the flesh are kind of, you, you got to use the spirit to overcome the works in your flesh instead of you being dead to the old man. Then you need to, then you need to prove that because if you're saying that then you get, he's asking a very legitimate question. Okay, if that's the case, if you're going to claim that your the God Spirit is controlling your flesh, then you have to blame God for all the sin that you you're doing because it says it's God that worketh in you to do in the will of His good pleasure. So you're saying the Spirit of God is not strong enough to do in the will of His good pleasure because God is not pleased when we sin. So because of your confusion of hypostatically unifying the flesh and the spirit, you're basically saying you're, 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 you're teaching works. And now you're saying, I'm going to avoid foolish questions because you got caught teaching works. It's not a foolish question. He just followed your logic. Okay, that's not the way the Bible phrases it. You're twisting scripture. You're teaching a false doctrine, a damnable heresy. No, you twist the scripture when you said that uh, the spirit controls your flesh. It was just a question. Are you saying you said that you sin, and are you saying that your flesh is stronger than your spirit, and that's why you sin? Well, allow me to avoid your foolish questions, since the Bible commands me to avoid foolish questions. So you won't answer that? No, I won't. Um, do you love the homosexuals? No, I do not. I hate homosexuals, and I wish that they would all die. See, and this is where it's going to go off the rails. I mean, it's already off the rails, but it's going to go really off the rails, because now, he, now he's going to prove that he doesn't believe that Jesus died for uh, their sins. He's, he's basically saying, he's saying, there's a limited tone. He said, well, I'm not going to say that 
Christ died for the sins of the homosexuals. But see, that's how that's why he started out saying, well, if you sin and they sin, why are you condemning other people for sinning when you, you yourself sin? Let he that is among you who is without sin cast the first stone. Why don't you stone yourself before you start stoning the homosexuals? And then you would understand that, oh, well, I guess that's by grace through faith we're saved, not of works that any man should boast. But if you're teaching that the homosexuals are reprobate because they're homosexual and the way that they prove they're not reprobate is by working and keeping the law in their flesh, even though nobody says by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified in the sight, then that means you're teaching works. But you're claiming to teach grace. So you're saying something that you quote, don't even believe. Uh, and why do you hate them? Because the Bible portrays them as violent predators from start to finish, and if we look at reality, they are violent predators. They are recruiters. They're not reproducers. They're recruiters. And so the Bible says that they should be executed, and I believe the Bible, and I hate them and wish that they would all die. And can a man of God hate? Well, I'm a man of God, and I hate, so there's proof that a man of God can hate. David, the man after God's own heart, said, do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee, and I'm not I grieve with them that rise up against thee. I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. That's Psalm 139, verses 18 through 21. So are you saying— David, are, are you saying, yes, a man who has been born again of God can still hate? Absolutely. I'm born again. King David was born again. So if you are a hater and you love God, how can you hate? How can yeah. you judge the homosexuals? You're no different than the ones you're judging. That's another foolish question. God hates homosexuals. So this idea that hate is wrong is a stupid liberal talking point because there are 21 verses in the Bible. That so why is this guy talking about political stuff right now? What's political? What's politics got to do? Love not the world nor the things in this world. What are, you, what are you talking politics for? That's a liberal talking. What do you mean liberal talking point? This is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptation that Christ, that, that Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners of whom I am what? Chief. So was Paul, according to that, Paul is saying, again, this is the same Paul that said it's no longer I that do it, that is in my flesh, do no good thing. He says I am chief. So if, if Paul is chief, that means he would be at the, Chief, according to Steve, Paul was at the, at the at the parade. He was like on the float in the lead float at the parade. He was in the he was in the gay pride parade and he was on the float because he was saying, I am chief. So why is he trying to justify himself in the flesh? Paul said, I am chief. Not only that, listen to this. But he turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Right? Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of what? Men? So those, the things that be of men are of Satan? Really? He rebuked Peter, saying, get behind me, Satan. You telling me the child of God is Satan? How does that work, guys? Paul says the sinners of, of I am chief and says, how to do that which is good, I find not. Jesus tells Peter, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> you know? How does that work, guys? Maybe it's just the people who aren't born again, children of the flesh aren't children of God. Maybe that's what's going on here. And maybe Jesus is talking about, look, I'm talking to the old Peter. I'm not talking to the Peter who's born again. Right? Directly talking. Of course, God can't accuse himself. If our life is hidden, God, God's going to accuse himself. God's going to be like, you're unrighteous, Peter. But Peter, like, but I'm found in you, having not my own righteousness. I don't care. I'm condemned within myself. I thought you said there's no condemnation of those in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after, oh, that's right, after the spirit. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Oh, okay. I think I think I'm understanding now. You're saying in my flesh, well, no good thing. Yeah, you're starting to pick it up, Peter. Are you saying I, I, I got to be born again, not a, not an incorruptible seed? That if I sow into the flesh, I shall of the flesh be corruption. You're starting to get it, Nicodemus. Huh? You mean they that in the flesh can't please God? I think you must have bought a spin the wheel again. You might get a vow. About God hating people, King David hated people. The Bible commands us to love the good and hate the evil. So. Your question doesn't make sense. So you feel justified as a man of God and a preacher hating the homosexuals and you think that's what God wants you to do? No, I don't feel justified. I know I am justified and I know for a fact that that's what God wants me to do. Second Chronicles 19.2 says, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon me from uh, upon thee from the Lord thy God. If you love those who hate the Lord, the Bible says you'll have God's wrath on you. And so, and so should, you hate those who hate him. And should people hate you because you sin as well? Should you be hated for it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not, no. Why should you?
No, look at now, look at now. That's that. There you go, guys. Guys, that just hypocritical. Now he said they should, you should hate them, but he shouldn't be hated because he's saying I, I, I's not as big a sinner. As, I'm not the biggest sinner as them boys is. Them boys is the big sinners. Them boys. Let's see here. And go. You know, there's somebody else. There's a story in here. And these people are talking about this thing. And they said, uh, they were present at the season. Some that told of the Galilee, Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said unto them, suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. Suppose ye that the people who died in quote 9-11 were greater sinners, you know? And I tell you, nay, except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. Wait a minute, my sheep never perish. What do they got to repent of? Repent of their dead works. They're trying to say that, oh, they're greater sinners. You know, they, they, did you hear what happened to them when they was in the, in the, in the parade, the gay pride parade? And then this and that happened. And Jesus like, suppose ye that these San Franciscans were greater sinners than all the other San Franciscans or the U.S. so-called citizens. You you think you're justified by the law? Let he that is among you who is without sin. He didn't say, look, he said, let he that is among you who is without sin. He didn't say, well, what kind of sin? Oh, she got caught in adultery. It's the very act. Now, that specific sin there, if you look at paragraph, no, he said, let he that is among you who is without sin, without, because if you offend one, you offend it all. So, or the 18 upon whom, look, look, the tower of Siloam, Siloam fell and slew them, think that these were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem. It's like, you think because of 9-11, what those people who died in the towers, you, you think they were greater sinners than all those in New York City? Is that what you think? I tell you, Stevie, nay, except you repent, thinking that you're trying to be justified by the law, except you stop think, thinking that you're, you're righteous, that you stop claiming that, oh, the sacrifice of Jesus wasn't sufficient for their sin according under the law. Except you sitting there as a hypocrite saying, well, they should be put to death for their sin. They got caught in the, they, the things that they do is disgusting. Look at this woman caught in the dark. She got caught in the very act. Steve, unless you repent, you show my sheep never perish. You need to believe the truth. You need to believe the gospel. Because what you're saying right now, according to your own testimony, doesn't sound like you believe. Sound like you believe in some limited atonement, perseverance of the saints. You said, you said sin, he said the sin death. And he's like, no, sin is not death. Right? Really? Sin will fulfill itself, bring forth death. What are you talking about? Christ died for our sins. So if sin, so if, if sin doesn't equal death, then gee, why did Jesus have to die for our sins? It's absolutely crazy what Steve is saying, guys. It's absolutely crazy what Steve is saying. You, you be hated if you're sinning and you hate the homosexuals who are sinning. What's the difference? Because I love the Lord and the homosexuals hate God. And the Bible says, I hate them that hate the Lord. So okay. you I love the Lord and the homosexuals hate God. Okay. So he just said he didn't keep the commandments, but he's acknowledging and accusing the homosexuals of not keeping the commandments. And so he's saying, I'm not a biggest sinner as the homosexuals, but he doesn't keep the commandments. And Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So you just got to acknowledge, look, I don't, I don't love you and I don't keep your commandments. Oh, now you're going to be honest. Good. So now you understand that you're a sinner because you're supposed to love God and love thy neighbor as thyself. And you don't do any of that. So. I guess you're not going to be justified by the law, huh? Right? I guess, I guess, I guess you don't keep my commandments. 
right? Um, let's see. Um, All right. Look at this. See, Steve. Steve is talking about something. You don't do. You, do you know what type of people they are, Jesus? Do you know what type of people they are? They is disgusting. How could you eat with them? Wherefore I say unto you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loveth much. But to whom is forgiven, the same loveth little. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. But he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. Right? And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Oh, no. You, 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 he said to her, you stop doing that little thing you're doing on every Thursday night about five o'clock when your husband goes to work. And then, you know, then you'd be forgiven if you repent from start keeping that law. No, thy faith has saved thee from faith to faith that just shall live by faith. Can't, see, you look at the outward appearance, you're going to get messed up, guys. You are going to get messed up. And so Steve is thinking, I haven't sinned it. I haven't sinned much. Steve is like, mm, I just, I haven't sinned as much sin as they did. You know, he's like the, he's like the, he's like the, the parable. He's not going to talk about the person who's in debt. Right? And he, Steve was trying to say, well, Jesus didn't need to pay for our legal sin debt with his blood. He didn't need he didn't need to do all that for me. Right? Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in the sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified, justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Do you have a love-hate relationship with God? Absolutely not. I only love God, and I hate homosexuals. Have you ever seen God? I have not physically seen God, but I have seen God. Have you physically seen homosexuals? Yes. So how can you love a God whom you've never seen and hate your fellow man who you have seen? Well, there you go, twisting scripture again, because the Bible actually says, if a man say he loved God and hated his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth God whom he hath not seen, it says if you don't love your brother whom you have seen. Homosexuals are not my brothers because they're not sons of God. They're not children of God. You've twisted the scripture there. If anybody... Well, no, no. The children of the, the, children of the flesh aren't children of God. See, Steve, at this point, should be like, well, I'm not a child of God according to the flesh either. But Steve's not being honest because he said, well, earlier he said, well, my, my body hasn't been regenerated. But what are you talking about, your body? Your flesh, your flesh body is back to the dust. It's going to stay in the dust. It's not ever going to go to heaven. The body we have is a spiritual body, the body of Christ being found in him, right? So, and then when he says the homosexuals are my, are my brother, that's odd because I thought, and Adam called his wife name Eve because she is the mother of all living. Isn't, isn't Eve the mother of all of us? So wouldn't we all be brothers? According to the flesh, you are the brothers with the homosexuals. All of us are. Right? We're all brothers, guys, according to the flesh. You may not like it. I know they've invented these divide and conquer schemes and scams. I, I get it. But that's why this kingdom is divided against itself, and that's why that's why I cannot stand. That's why you got now you have a choice. You can be born again. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. But see how people are accusing another, accusing and excusing. He actually looks it up there in first john chapter 4 verses 20 and 21 they'll see that you've twisted the word brother into fellow man homosexuals are not my brother how they can are. you how can you say you love god of whom you never seen it says your brother whom you have seen well your brother whom you have seen means children of the flesh because you can see the children of the flesh you can't see the children of god who are hid in god colossians through your dead and your life is hid in god 
So it says your brother you, whom you have seen. It's actually talking about anybody who you can see. That's the people, whoever you can see, that's your brother, guys. And the children of the flesh are not the children of God. So I don't know why Steve is playing a silly game. Did I, did I show that verse? Uh, hopefully I showed you that verse, children of the flesh. I think I've, I think I've already shown that, but let's just. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. The children of the flesh are not the children of God. And just in case somebody's like, well, okay, well, how about this? Just a, we've had fathers of our flesh which corrupt us. We gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather, instead of being subject to death, much rather be in subjection to the father of spirits? There you go. And spirit, do spirits have flesh and bones? No. Just in case somebody's still confused. God says, okay. No excuse. Which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh. Children of the flesh aren't children of God. Nor the will of man. It's not like when your mama and daddy or whomever got together and said, I'm about to make me a baby. No, you sow into the flesh, you shall the flesh reap corruption. You sow into the spirit, you shall the spirit reap life everlasting. But of God, Father of spirits. So this little thing that Steve is doing where he's trying to uh, separate himself from the children of the flesh. This little contradiction and this double mindedness that keeps going on back and forth, back and forth. See, he had the answer, and then when he got caught, now he's back on his he he's back on his uh he's back on his false teaching again. He said a few things correct, but then he's like, okay, now I'm gonna get back into the going I'm gonna go in on the homosexuals. But you you're 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 a filthy sinner too. What are you talking about? And your flesh dwells no good thing also. So what are you talking about? I hate your fellow man who you have seen. Can you answer that? You just twisted scripture again. That is not the question the Bible asks. The Bible says, if you don't love your brother whom you have seen, how can you love God whom you've not seen? I do love my brother whom I have seen, and I love God whom I've not seen, but I hate filthy perverts that molest children. How, so do, you de how do you determine who your brothers are? Because the Bible says, as many as received him, to them be the power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name. So my brothers are those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, not God-hating pedophiles. And how Right, but those who are the brothers according to God are the brothers according to the Spirit, and you have not seen them because their life is hidden in God, Colossians 3.3. 3. Those who you can see, those are the children of the flesh. That's why the Bible says, um, Colossians 3.3. 3. I'll go to this again. And I, the reason why we keep going back to this, guys, because I think it's such an instrumental verse. For ye are dead in your life, and your life is hid. So if you're... All, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. We all been baptized by one spirit into one body, one body, many members. So we're all of our brothers, according to God, are hid. They're spiritual children, right? Those are the ones you cannot see, right? But the ones that you can see, For the things which are seen are temporal, those are the children of the flesh, right? But the ones that you can't see, who have eternal life, things which are not seen are eternal, right? So there you go. How do you know if the people that you love have received God? Based upon the testimony of their mouth. And how do you know that they'll be, how that their words are true? They could just be repeating the Bible or saying right. things that they know that you love to hear. How do you know that they have been born again of God? Well, I don't know for sure, but here's the thing. I don't hate all unsaved people. I love unsaved people. The only people I hate are reprobates, people that hate the Lord who've been turned over to a reprobate mind according to Romans chapter one. So I hate the homosexuals. I don't hate unsaved people. I don't hate Muslims. I don't hate- Like, so he said, the only people I hate are reprobates, okay? Then in that case, he should hate his old man. In fact, listen to this. Listen to this. This is, this is Solomon. Listen to this. Paul, Solomon is talking about, <laughs> he's talking about, then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit and there was no profit under the what? Son. That's why we got to be born again from where? Heaven. Because he's saying there's no profit under the sun. Being born of the flesh of this world of darkness, there's no profit. That's why you got to be born again 
you know, it says love not the world nor the things in the world. Well, that's your, your family, friends, your house and all this stuff. Those are things that are in the world, including your old man. It's all in the world. That's why you got to be born again from heavenly Jerusalem, right? And we're just here as strangers and pilgrims. This is not our home. And he says, I turned myself to behold wisdom and madness and, and madness and folly for what can the man do that cometh after the king, even that which had been already done. He's basically saying all men are just going to perish and go back to the dust. All this stuff you're talking about, what are you really going to do? You're going to build up all these things. You're going to perish. Then I saw that the wisdom excelleth folly as far as light excelleth darkness. Wow. Wisdom excelleth folly as far as light excelleth darkness. That's, that's, that's really great. The, uh, the wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness. And I myself perceive also that one event happened to them all. All will perish and go back to the dust. Then I said in my heart, as it happened to a fool, so it happened even to me. Talking about his flesh. And why was I then more wise? Then I said in my heart that this is also vanity. Like you may appear to be wise in this world, you know, but the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God, right? Because you're still going to go to the death. For there is no remembrance of the wise more than the fool forever, right? It's talking about all, even the memory of them will be forgotten. Seeing that which now is in the days to come shall all be forgotten. And how died the wise man? He answers, as the fool. Like, you know, oh, I was wise. Well, okay, let's, let's see how you die then. All right, my sheep never perished. Then, listen, therefore, I hated life. I hated life. Because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me for all is vanity and vexation of spirit. So Steve is working to build his church. He's working to have a good family. He's working to raise his kids. He's working to do all the works of the flesh are his filthy rags. It's all going to go back to the dust. So we can sit here and pretend. But that's the reality. You know? That's the reality. Buddhists, I don't hate Hindus, I don't hate atheists. And he's talking about, I just hate the reprobate homosexuals. Well, here's the thing. That's why you're supposed to hate your own life. Look, he's talking about who he doesn't hate. Look, look. Look, look at this. Look at this. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can find it. Listen to this. See, this is why Steve. See, he, this is Mr. I take the Bible literally. He doesn't take it literally. Listen to this. If any man come to me, if any man come to me and hate not his father, what? Mother. Wait a minute now. Wife. So you got to hate your, you got to hate your, your father and mother. That's the root. Hate your wife. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Children. That's your offspring. You got to hate the root and offspring. Brethren and sisters. Young Ken, yea, in his own life, also, he cannot, listen, he cannot be my disciple. And you're going to say something false like, well, you know, disciples, see, Bible truth, the reason you got a problem with that is because disciples is only the ones that followed Jesus when he was here. See, Jesus is not here. Oh, really? So as many as are led by the Spirit, follow me as I follow Christ? There's no condemnation of those in Christ Jesus who walk not in the flesh, but after the spirit. As many as are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So, no, everybody who's saved is a disciple because we follow after him. We're led by the spirit. So you can say, well, that that's just that. That doesn't mean, okay, um, let's look at this then. Because God knew somebody would come up with some excuse. So he said, okay. These guys are going to try to get slick. And, uh, oh, man. Listen to this. For all those who want to get slick and pretend like, 
Okay, don't mean that. Okay, let's look at this. And everyone that have forsaken houses, brother, okay, sister, that's 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 your kin, father, same thing. Remember, father, that's father and mother, that's the root. Wife, oh, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Children, offspring. Look, land, lands. Period. For my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold and shall listen. Inherit everlasting life. What do you think that means? Oh, it's like Solomon said, I hated life and everything done under the sun is vanity. Well, I guess that means you got to be regenerated, born again. Oh, here it is. And Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, they which have followed me in the what? Regeneration, born again. Meaning, you know, he's talking about avoid foolish questions in genealogy. You know, people talk about what's your gene, your family tree. Oh, your family tree is the corrupt seed of the. Uh, the, the corrupt seed of death. That's what the family tree is. That withereth and falleth away and goes back to the dust. That's the family tree. That's why you got to be regenerated. And it's a spiritual regeneration, not some flesh and blood and all this DNA stuff that people are trying to push right now. They're faking Bible prophecy. That's why they got to, they got to, to play God, they got to shorten your life so they can feel like they laugh, they last longer. And that's what, that's what, that's what people do, guys. It's, it's unfortunate. But that's what people do. People like, you know, I got but a short while, you know, man is, man is but a vapor, right? Life is but a vapor for them. So they're like, oh, I, well, the way I can feel more alive is if I kill more people faster. If I got all these riches and power and I just want to see certain things happen because I got but a short time. I got to see it in my lifetime. That's why things are going on. But all of us who believe like, you know, we have eternal life. We have treasures that are non-perishable treasures, treasures in heaven that won't fade a crown that won't fade and we have we have eternal life this you know so it's important to know this it's important to understand this but see god gets people because it says in the regeneration that you know it's talking about being born again and he's saying all this world that sits in darkness he's saying look this is all there's nothing good that's what we just saw in solomon he says all the works under the sun so he's saying look these people who say there's a 12 tribes of Israel. Look, there's the true, there's the Jerusalem above, as free as mother of us all. That's the true. We saw a better country in heavenly. Those are Abraham, the gospel preached before to Abraham. Abraham believed God and has counted him for righteousness. Those are people who all believe and they were born again of incorruptible seed. Nobody should be bragging on Abraham's carnal seed. It's silly. Avoid foolish questions in genealogy. He's saying, look, I understand there's a fake, phony, false, you know, Jerusalem and a fake and phony Israel. God called it from the beginning that they're going to fake prophecy God knew it guys they're not fooling God with that are they fooling you Jesus said uh, lest a man be born again he cannot see nor enter the kingdom of God and they just say well we're going to fix that we'll just make we'll just fake prophecy you know they're, they're, like they're, it's so crude they're, they're faking a prophecy is so crude that's why they got to try to inundate you with all these false teachers to make you believe it and then they got to Oh, if you don't believe this lie, that means you're anti this. What do you mean? If I, if I don't believe in the idea of a chosen race, then I'm anti what? So if I don't believe in racism, then I'm a racist. This is how stupid they think people are. If you question us, we're going to punish you because we don't want you to know we're the, we've been doing this wicked stuff to fake prophecy all this time. Look, look, we're all sinners. I'm not trying to say that they're bigger sinners than, than me or I'm a, a uh, you know less a less sinner I understand I'm nothing good dwelleth in me I understand I need to die to self and I need to be born again so I, I, I believe the gospel I'm born again guys I have eternal life and I know my flesh is going to perish and go back to dust completely understand that and in doing that and being regenerated and born again that means I'm no longer even of this world that's why I just showed you the verse that said uh, you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God and I said the eyes of, that have seen me shall see me no more Thine eyes are upon me and I am not. Meaning, yeah, you see me, but that's not me. The me that you see, that's not me. The me that is the child of God is hid in God, having the righteousness of God because God is my righteousness. So everyone that has forsaken houses and brother and sister and father and mother and wife and children or land for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. And that's what you get just by believing the gospel, guys. That's what you get. Because when you believe, you become part of the what? First fruits. That's why I said many that are first shall be last. Right? 
because it's to the who to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. So when we believe we're born again, we're part of the first fruits because you have to believe the gospel, right? Become part of the first fruits. Then you can go to those who are not even in the kingdom. So they have to follow me as I follow Christ. So we're in Christ, who's the first fruits. And then because we're new creatures created in Christ, those who are outside of Christ have to follow after us. And so many that are first shall be last, right? And last shall be first because they may have been born before us. But when we're born again, we're of the first fruits. And that puts them behind us as Gentiles who need to follow us as we follow Christ. I mean, the Bible... I can't express how beautiful the words of God are. And for those of you who are saint who believed, you you see it by faith, you understand it, and there's a joy that's you know amazing. And I, I get that the cares of this world are heavy, but I'm telling you things because I you know the time is short and I want us to understand and I want us to be able to, to, God wants us, not I, God wants us to be able to, to tell other people. And, and so these people who are making a mockery, because Steve Anderson is making a mockery right now. How is he going to sit here and say Jesus died for our sins and then teach this lie about, well, if you're homosexual, then then blah, 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 blah. How is he going to teach that it's uh, by grace through faith? And he's trying to say, well, well, I try to teach the Christian, so-called Christian life, blah, blah, blah. How is he going to teach that God is a spirit and say, well, I don't believe God has a chosen race, but he's going to say, I believe the Trinity, though. That's why people are arguing over the flesh, guys, because they're like, well, you you, is, you can't be of God's flesh and of his bones because you're black. God can't, can, can't come in the likeness of sinful flesh that looks like you. Right? That's what they're saying. For we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. And that's talking about the church. Because it's saying, like, that's that old man. Right? That's the Israel that's going to be put off. Right? For no man yet ever hated his own flesh, but nourished and church, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. Right? It's like, well, wait a minute. That's the mediator between God and man. Right? God's not a hypocrite. He says the mediator between God and man, that's the one who died for our sins. Right? And he's explaining, like, don't confuse the mediator with God. Because God <laughs> says, I pray not for the world. He says, pray not for the love, not the world, nor the things in the world. That's why I said you got to forsake mother, father, and hate mother and father, all this kind of stuff. See, see how KJV said, like, we're members of his body, flesh, and bone. Look what it says in the, look what they did in the other ones. They're like, ooh, members of his body. Take off that flesh and bones part, because that kind of ruins it for our whole chosen race narrative. We're trying to teach this lie, but our ethnic chosen ethnicity you know for, for Zionism purposes that's why they're doing that guys that's why you know they don't want you to know the truth behind all that but here's the thing you don't need to know the truth behind all that all you gotta do is believe this is the beauty of the bible all you gotta do is believe God over man and, and they're gonna again they're gonna inundate you that's why you know like these 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 teachers these churches uh these uh Institutions, the History Channel, all this stuff. Look, they are, they're always putting in lies. <laughs> they're just always putting in lies. Yes, men war, men murder people, men men are are the hearts desperately wicked. Why are they fighting? Because they love this world. That's why they're fighting. Don't fool. Don't let them fool you. Anyone who is saying, "Well, we're fighting this and this is a holy war," and they're talking about fighting a holy war with weapons and with carnal weapons, they're lying to you. They're lying to you. That's why they try so hard to convince you that the Bible's not spiritually discerned. Because they're like, no, and he took out the sword and killed all these people. That was a physical warfare. That's what they're trying to tell you. They want you to believe it's all physical warfare. Yet, Jesus says our weapons aren't carnal. So, you know, he tells you what the whole armor of God is. I mean, you can't make any money. You, are you going to lobby Congress for the Look, look, look. How do you how do you lobby Congress for this? Look, look. This this is why you know this so-called evangelical movement. Listen to this. Wherefore taking you the whole armor of God. Oh, we gotta fight the we gotta fight the infidels. Okay, that we may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all the stand. Well, what do we gotta take with us? Uh, uh, loins girded about with truth. Uh, okay. 
having on the breastplate of righteousness. Where are we going to buy that at? On your, in your feet, child, with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh, uh, oh, okay, how, what, what, what are we going to get? Halliburton? Okay. Can I get that on Amazon? Uh, Amazon Direct? Can they deliver that in, in two days? Above all, take the shield of faith, wherein you be able to quench all the what? Fiery darts of the of the wicked, because they're going to be spitting fire at you. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I mean, really? <laughs> He's like, look, guys, like, how are you going to, how are you going to, how are you going to fake prophecy with, with these weapons? Can't, can't do it now, can you? But see, that's why it says through the foolishness of preaching, right? You can't fake prophecy with these weapons. And that's why they hate, that's why they hate the, the, the truth, guys. And that's why they want to push these modern Bible versions, too, because they want to teach these lies. I don't hate agnostics. I hate filthy pedophiles. May they all rot in hell. They're do, you, evil. do you love all people? Absolutely not. No. Then you love no one. That's another stupid statement from you that's not in the Bible. So was God said when God said we should even love our enemies, did he mean everyone or some people? He did not mean everyone. He meant that we should love our enemies. I do love my personal enemies, people that do wrong to me. I Remember what I just showed you? Hate mother, <laughs> father. You know what I mean? So he can't. He can. He can pretend all he wants, right? Um, everyone that forsaken house, brother, sister, father, mother, wife, children, lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. So the only way you can interpret this is believe you got to be born again. Because think about this: anybody who believes in the chosen so-called race, this this ruins it now, doesn't it? Didn't this ruin it? Jacob and Esau, which are twin brothers, by the way, which proves the foolishness of it all. God put twin brothers in there. And people talking about something. Uh, I think I'm uh, I'm definitely a descendant of Jacob. How do you know you're not a descendant of Esau? They're the same blood. So what, what does it matter? Apparently, it must not be about that because that's why there's twins. Same, same. And everybody descended from Adam and Eve. So that's the thing. And it says everyone have forsaken. Listen, houses. Well, okay, well, why do we need to be going to the land? I mean, you can't even be got a forsake house? Uh, brother, oh, wait a minute. Sister, okay. Uh, what about, how are we going to be the children of God if we're forsaken? Uh, that, that's divide, you're dividing us all up. Uh, father, mother, man, I forsake my, I thought, I thought it was a good thing to be in the marriage. Wife, chilling, I thought that forsaking my children was worse than Neverdale. Lands, this written now this part right here. We had manifest destiny with dominion theology, our conquest theology, assignment, whatever you want to call it. All of our war profiteering of the three Abrahamic faiths, you know, all our lies about oh, we're doing this for the name of God, this is a holy war. All our lies are being exposed here. He's saying that you gotta forsake all these things. And then he just tells you, love not the world nor the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And people are like, I really don't know what that means there. That's a very confusing verse. No, he's just saying you got to be born again. And he's just saying my kingdom is not of this world. The children of the flesh are not children of God. They can't please me. Right? This world is full of darkness. Darkness has no mean, have, Darkness has no communion. has no fellowship with light. Light has no fellowship with darkness. Right? That's what he's saying. I love them, but I don't love God's enemies. I love my enemies, but I do not love those who molest children and hate the Lord. Then you love no one. That's another stupid statement from you that makes no sense. It's funny because Jesse's basically leaving, using the law on Steve Anderson. <laughs> Jesse's using the law on Steve Anderson, but Jesse's in denial that he sins according to his flesh. He's, Jesse's like, well, no, the spirit controls my flesh and I stopped sinning. Steve is sitting here trying to, being a hypocrite, saying, uh, you know, Jesse's being a hypocrite too, but Steve is being a hypocrite also because he's making it seem like uh, he's 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 loving or keeping part of the law, and he's thinking that he's more righteous than the homosexuals for some reason. When the Bible says you offend one part, you offend it all, so he's using the law unlawfully. Because God, God, God said that. To love everyone, then I say you love no one. Do you believe that God loved all people? Nope. He did love them in the past. He loved past tense all people, but they get to a point where God said in the book of Hosea, I will love them no more. Meaning he loved them in the past, but he doesn't love them anymore because they become a reprobate. So do you believe? So it says they become a reprobate. A reprobate is just a person who doesn't know God. But Steve, your flesh doesn't know God. Your flesh doesn't know God. Your flesh doesn't know God. The old man doesn't know God. The new man knows God, not the, not the, 
Not the not the old man. Look, here's here's the thing. Um, listen, this is a, here's a verse. You know that verse I just showed you about mother, father, sister, brother, forsaken him? Listen. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh, right? Because now that when you when you believe the gospel, you're not of the root and the offspring of the children of the flesh. You're no longer in that uh, foolish generation of, of the flesh. You're no longer of that perishable seed of the flesh. Henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, listen, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Meaning you don't even know Jesus after the flesh anymore. But listen, listen what it says. Therefore, if any man be in Christ. So it's saying when we weren't in Christ, we knew Christ after the flesh, right? When we were not in Christ, therefore, if any man be in Christ, wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known, past tense, Christ after the flesh, yet hint now, henceforth, know we him no more, meaning we don't even know Christ after the flesh. Who? All of us who've been born again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. You're no longer after the flesh. So now all of a sudden you know Christ after the what? Spirit, but not after the flesh, which is why it says you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be the spirit of God dwelling in you. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. He, any man be Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So it's saying that, guys, how do you how does this work, guys? Let me let me let me here's why this doesn't work. Here's why this doesn't work for hypostatic union. Here's why this doesn't work for the Trinity, right? Because if this is the case, if we don't know Christ after the flesh, and you know this is basically saying people who are born again don't know Christ after the flesh because now they know him after the spirit. But it's saying they used to know him after the flesh, meaning we were his brothers after the flesh, but now we're not. It says, wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. So we, we look, we knew him, but now we don't know him. But wait a minute, if that's the case, how will he say many will come to me in that day? Right? These people who try to think they can keep the law. Listen. Not every man that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall say, so enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doth the will of my Father which is in heaven, this is the will of him that sent me, that all who see the Son and believe have everlasting life. That's the will, right? Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Steve said, I went all the way over to Netherlands, the Netherlands, right? And in thy name, I cast out devils, right? I cast out them unclean spirits. Listen, and in thy name done many wonderful work. Look at what I did over there now. Steve is just bra he's, he's talking, he's, he's braggadocious. I done all these good things, right? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Why is he saying depart from me? And why is look? How can he say I never knew you? How can Jesus say, I never knew you, when it says over here, we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Oh, I guess hypostatic union isn't true, guys. I guess there's one God, God is a spirit named Jesus, and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. I guess those are not, they're not the same. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So, you can't say God is not flesh. There's no modalism and there's no hypostatic union and there's no trinity. It's God is a spirit who came in the likeness of sinful flesh in the man, Christ Jesus. But God is a spirit named Jesus. Understand? You can't have it, but you can't say, wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. It's saying, look, Henceforth, you don't know any man after the flesh. Even though you knew Christ after the flesh, you don't even know Christ after the flesh anymore. 
but we know him after the spirit. That's why it says you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwell in you. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. So it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Once you're born again, a new creature regenerated. Now you know him. Because you know him after the spirit. And now you know God. God's the spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So because he's making a distinction between the spirit, as Steve Anderson was saying, and the flesh, even though Steve says, well, I believe in hypostatic union. and the, the, Steve admitted that when he had to. Right? When he had to. But it says here, behold, all things have become new. Well, we're a new creature, and the new creature is a spiritual creature, and we know God because God's a spirit. And God says, He says, Know we no man after the flesh. Now henceforth know we him no more. Right? Right? Not even Christ. So it says, I profess I never knew you depart from me, ye that work in iniquity. Right? It's saying that all the works are dead works. All those people are trying to work the law, they're doing dead works. Dead works. I hope this makes sense to you guys. I hope this should be so comforting, hopefully. I mean, because when God showed me, I was so comforted by it. Because it's basically just saying, look, this proves the point. Everybody's trying to talk about some hypostatic union. You just asked them, you said, well, could you explain this? And they're going to come up with some crazy thing. But the thing that they can't, the reason why they, what they're saying is not going to make sense is because you're going to say, wait a minute. Well, you can't say this. Wherefore, now know we no man after the flesh. They were like, well, they're just talking to those people at that specific time. See the context. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, now, now henceforth know we him no more. What do you mean? Okay, if he's talking to them at the time, he's saying hey, we've known no man after the flesh. How does that work? Because at the time, didn't they know people after the flesh? And at the time, if you're saying that's the case, then wouldn't why would Jesus be saying you've known him after the flesh, now henceforth know we him no more? How can he say that to them? And then how can he say, now, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. How does that work? And how do you reconcile the fact that it's saying, know we him no more. And how, if, it, if, it's Christ, if it's Christ is hypostatically unified, you can't make a distinction between God, Jesus, who is a spirit, and the media between God and man, the man, Jesus, who is a flesh. How can he say, they know him no more? But then he says, I never knew you. How can you say I never knew you? When you're like, yeah, I did. You're right here in this verse right here. It says in this verse, uh, I, you, we know him after the flesh. So how can you say I, know, I never knew you? Look, look at this. Look at this right here. I never knew you. That means we only know him after the spirit once we're born again. I never knew you. So apparently God is making the distinction between the flesh and the spirit. Because he says, I never knew you. Right? Lord, Lord, right? So, guys, I'm gonna let it go at that. I guess I'll play out a little bit more because it's already a long video. But let's just see what see what goes. See that God love you because all sinners have reprobate reprobated minds. When you're that's sinning false. during the periods when you are sinning, he says that's false. He said all sinners have reprobated minds. He's like that's false. Guys, is God the head, the savior of sinners? But the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither can be. What are you talking about? That's false. For to be carnally minded is death. Right? But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So what does he what does he mean that's false? See, Steve is getting. Um, I don't know, like, I guess the way to say this is there's so much heresy in what Steve believes. But, the, but see, people don't, and here's the thing, people don't question Steve. That's the beauty about him. See, this is the beauty of the so-called, the way the so-called church system works, works. They get there and they get to get behind the little pulpit. They don't, they don't take questions. And so when they don't take questions, they just, just people sit there. Amen. Amen. Like the people just sit there and say, amen. And they think, oh, okay, I'm right. And I'm doing great works of God. And I went to the Netherlands and man, I'm being persecuted. And Steve's talking about how he's being persecuted. Listen to this guy. I think 
is the way it goes. Man. But as then he was born after the flesh, listen, persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. So it's not talking about you being persecuted. Jesus. That's why Paul was talking about something when I was, oh, I was shipwrecked and this and that. And he says, I speak as a fool. Because like, I'm not talking about my flesh. I'm not doing the work of God according to my flesh. Nobody's saved because of my flesh. The words that I speak to their spirit in their life. And it's God that worketh in me. Today, if you hear his voice, harden out your heart to do it to will of his good pleasure. Today, if you hear his voice, harden out your heart. It's not me. It's not the flesh that's getting you saved. It's, it's God who's a spirit that's saving you. It's many as receive him, not me. Right? But if you reject he that is in me, you've rejected him. You've rejected us all because I'm in him and he's in me. Right? Him that are born after the spirit, even so it is now. So this is what the Bible is saying. So it's, when, even in the beginning when he started bragging about how he suffered and all this kind of stuff, he's just speaking foolishly. And do God love you in those moments? Absolutely. And no, all sinners do not have. So God problem. love you while you're sinning, but he doesn't love the homosexuals when they're sinning. Because it's not the same thing. Do they, does he love? See, see, see now he's, he's making God a respect of a person now, right? Either make the tree good or make the tree bad, right? Right? Isn't that what the Bible say? Oops. I think I did that wrong. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, right? If you're born of the spirit, either make his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt. He that sowed to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption and his fruit corrupt. He that sowed to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. For the tree is known by his fruit. So you're saying the fruit, you're saying that the children of God are corrupt. For a good tree cannot bring forth corrupt fruit. You sow to the flesh you shall of the flesh reap corruption. That's why happens that a king is stupid. Neither does a corrupt tree, you sow it to the flesh, let the flesh be corruption. In my flesh dwells no good thing. They that in the flesh can't please God, bring forth good fruit. Right? It's basically telling you, don't me either make the tree, either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt. And you know what God says about this, guys? Remember that guy? This is the beauty of God. Look at his word, like the way it works. Remember this guy? And he says, um, And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town, out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and he said, look, remember what we just read about the trees, guys. I see men as trees walking. I see men as trees walking. There's no condemnation of those in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh. You sow into the flesh, you shall of the flesh reap corruption. You must be born again, of, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God that liveth and abideth forever that which is born of flesh is flesh corrupt that was born of spirit is spirit a good tree cannot produce corrupt fruit neither can a corrupt tree produce good corrupt tree produce good fruit make the tree good or make the tree bad steve he looked up and said i see men as trees walking right and after that he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up and he was what restored and saw every man clearly oh all of sin that comes short of the glory of god i see it now i see it but see you got people who are blind guides they don't see it guys they do not see it they're trying to make God a respected person they're trying to justify themselves by claiming that oh i'm a grace believer and he, he, Steve just rattles it off. You know, I believe grace to faith. And then, but then you look the Christian life. Are you going to get kicked out of the church? What did I do? You stole the money. Of the, the baby killers of unborn children when they're sinning. Yes. If they're not a reprobate, if they're not a God-hating reprobate, he does. Yes. So God loved the women. 
God hating reprobate. Let's see. Let's go back to this reprobate thing. What is a reprobate? Because he's not a God hating reprobate. If you love me, keep my commandments. Does anybody keep his commandments? No. Know ye not yourselves how that Christ is in you, except you be reprobate. Christ is not in it's, Christ is not in the unsaved. So everybody who's not saved is a reprobate. And then our flesh is also is rejected. That's why it says our flesh is rejected by God. It stays right here. Um, I could be going down too far here. I need to probably end this video. But, um, I, I spelled them wrong. See, that's what it's talking about the man Jesus, and it's talking about you know Jesus after the flesh, but it's saying you don't know God. That's why we had a mediator, guys. But God doesn't love the wicked. They that hate thee shall be clothed with shame, and the dwelling place of the wicked shall come to aught. The Lord tried the righteous, but the wicked and him that loved violence his soul hated. That's all of us. That's why it says Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. And that's why they were twin brothers. Because he's trying to explain to us that, you know, Jacob believed the gospel he was born again. You right? That's what, that's what the Bible's saying. So I'm, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go at that. Let me play a little bit more and be done with this. Who are killing unborn children in their wombs. Yes. He loved the men who are supporting that. But he, yes. is that a sin to kill your child or children in your womb? Yes, it is. So God loved the sinners who are killing yes. unborn children in their wombs, but they don't love, he doesn't love the homosexuals. Right, because homosexuality is the only sin that is unique to reprobates, people that are rejected by God, people who hate God. They're the only people who do that homo stuff. No, no the sin that God does not... And Steve should know this of sin because it. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ from faith to faith to just of sin because they believe not on me. That's what it is, and, and faith is another law. Normal people have no temptation to be a homo. That's so amazing. the only people that are homos, the Bible tells. Normal people have no temptation. What does it say then? say he says normal people don't have a temptation this is why steve anson doesn't take questions <laughs> there have no temptation taken you but such as common to man but god is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able but with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it what does that mean well it, uh, some people are tempted to believe they can keep the law some people are tempted to try to to try to justify themselves before God, right? That's the temptation. 
and all the other sins according to the flesh, how could Steve say that? If it wasn't, if God didn't know about it, it wouldn't be in the Bible. He'd be like, well, that's one. I didn't catch that one. No, that's the temptation. That, no, but the temptation that men suffer from is to think that they can keep the law after coming to having the law, the knowledge of good and evil. How do you think you can keep, how do you think you're going to be justified by the law if you know what the law requires? When, uh, how would you think that's the, the, the temptation that's going <laughs> to, that's going to get you destroyed is the fact that you think you can keep the law. Tell me ye the desire to be under the law. Do you not hear the law? That's the temptation. It's like, who are these people who think they're going to be justified by the law? That's what that's what's getting people. Tells us how they got that way in Romans 1 by rejecting and hating God. That sin is unique to them, according to Romans 1. Because you have accepted your sins as something that is normal to God, is it possible that you're judging others because you're still in a fallen state? You, you may be able to quote the Bible. Is it possible you have justified your sins and that you're judging others based on what you think is right, but not what you know is right? Is that possible? Absolutely not. I don't justify my sins. My sins are wrong. You're the one who justifies your sins by claiming that you have no sin when you sin every day. But you're you just you do justify your sins when you're talking about you versus the homosexual. You're trying to say, I thank God I'm not like other men. That's what you're doing. You're justifying your sins. Stop it. Justify. You justify sinning. You're, you're allowing yourself to make excuses for being a preacher and say you're called by God and for sinning. Is that, isn't that justification? You are a sinner and justifying sin. it. You sin during this broadcast. I've observed you sinning during this broadcast. Is that a sin to justify sinning? I don't justify sinning. I condemn sin. I condemn all sin, including my own sin. I don't justify sin. You're, you justify your own sin. You want to point out the sins you've done in this broadcast? Do you believe that God, there are times when God sinned? No. And are you a son of God? Yes. And if you're a son of God, how can you deviate from your father who is perfect in all things and sin sometimes? How can you serve Satan and God? You can't ride two horses at the same time. See, this is it. We show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts, the meanwhile, accusing or else excusing one another. He is, he's accusing the homosexuals, right? But yet he says, well, Christ died. Did Christ not die for that sin? Right, that's, the, that's under the law. That's the stoning, that's all, you know, it said, the law, the law, Mo, Mo, Moses said, you know, and he's like, he's accusing them. But then he's excusing himself. He can't pretend he's not excusing himself. He's saying, well, I'm not justifying my... Yeah, sure, you said that sin is unique. You've become a judge of the law now. He's, he's like, well, let me, let me correct God on his law now. How are you able to ride two horses at the same time? You serve a saint by sinning, and then you serve God, as you said, by not sinning. How can you serve two masters? Well, you know what? My spirit is saved. My spirit's a son of God. How are you able to serve two masters? You only serve Satan, so you... See, now I had to jump back to my spirit is saved. Which is it, Steve? The, the, so wouldn't that work for the, the wouldn't that same wouldn't that same thing work for the homosexual? Wouldn't he say when they say, well, my spirit is saved, not my flesh. My flesh dwells no good thing. Yeah, I, I'm a sinner. Wouldn't that the, wouldn't, wouldn't the homosexual say that too? That's why the one that you're looking at on the, in the parade that's not me. My life is hidden in God. My, I'm found in Him, having not my own righteousness. All the works of my flesh are filthy rags. You don't have that problem. How you can't, you can't, man, thief on the cross would have not, see, I mean, <laughs> the people not even understand that the significance of the thief on the cross, you didn't have time to do it, to prove, prove you're not gay. <laughs> mm. are you able to serve, how are you able to serve too much? I mean, you, you're on a cross and you're wearing, you're wearing a guy that you're cross dressing. Masters. You only serve one, and that's No, I'm asking you, how are you able to serve two masters? Serve two masters. You serve sin, which is Satan, and you serve God, which is not, you said. So you said you're serving two masters. I wonder if any of your listeners are stupid enough to think that you don't sin. No, 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 you're not answering my question. How are you able to serve two masters? Avoid foolish questions. You're not going to answer that? Well, yeah, it is a good question. You can't serve, you can't serve two masters, Steve. That, that, is, that is true, right? Paul said, how to do that which is good, I find not. That is in my flesh dwell no good thing. And then he said, for I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so that with the mind I am itself, because we have the mind, it's like the spiritual mind is life, carnal mind is death, right? 
sorts of the flesh shall the flesh regret. But with the flesh, the law of sin. He says, I find not. My flesh serves sin. But he says, God, whom I serve. With... Just try. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit. There you go. Flesh, he served the law of sin. My spirit, I serve God. My life is hidden, God. And God worketh in me, so... I don't serve two masters. I am dead. My life is hidden. God, the old things passed away. All things have become new. The eyes that see me shall see me no more. Thy eyes are, thy eyes are, thine eyes are upon me, and I am not. Well, no, I'm not. God said you can't serve two masters. You either love one or hate the other. Well, God said you're going to hell because you don't have. No, to you either love one or hate. Do you love your sins? Nope. Then why you do them? Thank you, Pastor Anderson. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. Well, you can go to hell because you're a false prophet. Amazing. Right? Thank you, sir. Amazing. See, he didn't love his enemies. He didn't love his enemies. <laughs> he did not love his enemies right there. Uh, I mean, this guy obviously he, he, he believes. I mean, he's delusional. Thomas, he does. He Thomas, he don't stand in his flesh. It's kind of crazy, man. But um, I just want to show that video. I just, I'm just like, man, this stuff is amazing. In some ways, like God's word is amazing, guys. His grace is sufficient, and but people. Steve Anderson is being slick. And that's the thing. Like, people who try to be more slick, who pretend to believe in grace, but then you listen to them, you're like, if you believe it's by grace through faith, then how come it's not grace by faith to everyone? You're going to sit here and try to preach against so called Calvinism, but you're trying to teach perseverance of the saints. Tell them, oh, they got some kind of special sin. Cause they, like, you're, you're trying to justify yourself. You're saying, I think God is not like other men. Then you're talking about how you were surfered and persecuted because you're preaching against them. and all this stuff, then you get caught, and then you change your theology in the middle of the show. It's like, and the guy is asking you a reasonable question, then you just say, well, oh, avoid foolish questions. Okay, get out of jail free card, I guess that's what that's supposed to be. Um, all right, praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, King of Kings, Lord of all, take